In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. Today we begin by reading Luke chapter 14, verses 16 to 24. And in it you will find the Lord tells a parable about a man, a powerful man, who organizes a feast for his friends. And he sends off his servant to go and collect them in. And these three friends, they make ridiculous excuses about why they can't come. The first one says, well, I've bought a plot of ground and therefore I can't come. Who buys any ground without looking at it first? The second one says, I've made an investment in five yoke of oxen. It's like buying a really expensive tractor or a huge piece of machinery that you're going to uh, use for making your living. Who would, who would buy them first and then go and test them? And the third one blames his wife. I am newly married, he said, and therefore I cannot come. So what does the Lord do? What he does, he sends out his servant again. He says, go, go out into the town, into the sidewalks, into the, into, the, into the place, and bring people in, bring in the blind and the lame um, and the beggars. That's the way the Jewish people thought about the non-Jewish people at the time. And so they go out and they collect these people in. And the servant comes again and says, there's still room. So he says, well, go out again, this time into the hedges and the byways, and compel them to come in. What he means really is that the, these poor people would be ashamed to come in. So they're being encouraged to come in strongly. And then he has a full house, he has the meal, and he says, those people who are invited first, none of them more taste of my banquet. It's rather a frightening parable. Originally, of course, it refers to the people that Jesus would have been speaking to at that time. These are the people that, according to the parable, are the chosen people, the invited people, the guests that God has prepared the banquet in the kingdom of heaven for and all of them turn it down. They have absurd reasons for turning it down. Basically, they don't want it. They're not interested in having it. And so the Lord then sends out his prophets and his servants and apostles again, another and a third time. This time to go looking for those who are not the chosen people, the Gentile people and everybody else. And those are encouraged into the kingdom of heaven, whereas the first guests, they don't get anything at all. Well, what are we to think about this now? Nowadays, of course, we good Orthodox Christians think of ourselves as being the proper ones to receive the kingdom of heaven. But what do we do? We think of all sorts of reasons why it is that we don't participate fully in the life of the church. Do we go on pilgrimages? Not by and large. Do we study the scriptures? Not by and large. Do we spend our time in prayer? Not by and large. Do we turn up to church week after week? Not by and large. Do we engage in the services when we are there? Do we work hard at them? Remember they're called a party. It's a feast in the banquet of the kingdom of heaven. Not by and large. Instead of which, we make excuses. Oh, well, I have work to attend to. Oh, well, I have family who are coming. Oh, well, I have... You get the point. There's always some reason why we fail to engage with the gospel. Well, of course, it would be fine for those people back then, but what did the Lord really mean by that? And we talk to each other and we think of all sorts of excuses about why the purity of the gospel should not affect ourselves. But it does. And the Lord will eventually send out his servants again and find people who are not of the elect, who are not within the church, who maybe have never known anything about him, he'll find the blind, the lame, the beggars, those in the roads, those in the hedges, those in the ditches, those far away from the church. 
and he will encourage them it says in the gospel compel them to come in he won't drag them in by their ears but he'll show them what it is and with this compelling message they will come in maybe long before you do and I do so what must we do while we have the chance while the Lord is still broadcasting his invitation to you while he's still writing our names on the letters and saying come to my banquet in the kingdom of heaven you're going to enjoy it it's fantastic it's the very presence of God himself then we turn to him we say yes I'm just polishing my shoes and I'm on my way and we come into his promised kingdom we engage with it fully we make every use that we can of all the marvelous ways that we can find God within the church and there are many ways we pray we pilgrimage we fast we rejoice we liturgize we help the poor we feed the hungry we clothe the naked we visit the sick we visit those in prison we come to the aid of those who are captives we serve Christ himself and that way that's the way to respond to his message that way we sit also at the great banquet in the kingdom of heaven of course we should also be ourselves turning our minds to those in the hedgerows and the byways those people who are blind and lame and beggars and encourage them to come in with us also we're looking forward towards the great feast of the nativity of our Lord and God and Saviour Jesus Christ we have very little time to go before then let us redouble our efforts in thinking about how we're going to make that feast special for God so that amongst all the gift wrapping the turkey buying the present buying the house decorating and so on we think how do we decorate the kingdom of God and we decorate it by living the gospel to the full Amen God bless you